Are we in a marathon or a sprint? I was in a seminar online last week and the leadership specialist who was running it, James Lawrence, said at the start of the lockdown, we were asking questions like that. Is this going to be a sprint or a marathon? How long is it going on? He said, I'm now thinking in terms of a triathlon. We've just come out of the first stage, just started to come out of the lockdown. And in a triathlon, your first stage is the open water swim and you drag yourself out of the water soaking wet and you've got to jump on a bicycle and ride round and round and round in circles for, for what seems like eternity. And he said, that's what it feels like at the moment, that we, we've just come out of one stage of a triathlon and we're already exhausted. We're already uh, at our physical and uh, mental limits, but we have still got a big ride ahead of us to get even to the halfway stage of the race. And that might sound a bit kind of oh, really tough, but sometimes it helps to have these images to kind of map where we are in all of this. We are just starting to come out of lockdown, but there's still quite a long way ahead. And that image of a triathlon has really kind of resonated with me and maybe it resonates with you as well. The other image that's kind of helping me at the moment is trying to work out what, what is COVID done? What has lockdown done uh, with our society? I'm here in St. Peter's Church and in a few weeks time, this floor behind me is going to have the, uh, the veneer taken off it, sanded off it, so we'll be able to see the condition of the wood underneath, see its colour, see its uh, patterns, see everything about it before we retreat it and make it ready for use for when we reopen the church. And it feels to me as though lockdown and coronavirus has stripped off the veneer on our society. There was part of me that was hoping that there would be some kind of purging of the national soul and the chance that we had to stop shopping, stop spending, stop our frenetic activity, the increased time for reflection. Somehow that would do something deep and lasting uh, and rich and good within us as a culture. Now for some individuals that probably is what's happened, but in many other, many other areas it seems like what's happened is that the veneer has been stripped back. So we're able to see what's really underneath. On one hand, we're able to see incredible acts of kindness and courage with our emergency services, with the three quarters of a million people who volunteered in the early days of coronavirus to deliver food parcels, uh, with the many, many folks who have gone out of their way to help others and to provide a support network for other people. But in other areas where the veneer has been stripped back, we see people piling onto beaches and into public spaces and not really thinking too much about social distancing. We're seeing toilet rolls or hand gel disappear off the shelves of supermarkets in panic buying. Some of the worst excesses of, uh, of our selfishness and self-absorption, uh, sometimes our carelessness of the well-being and the lives of other people, those things have been exposed as well. And you can see people getting increasingly fractious with each other. And so maybe what lockdown has done is, is it stripped back the veneer so we can see more clearly what's going on in our lives and in the lives of people around us. It's stripped us back in those areas where we can see what our support structures are, what our relationship with our family was or wasn't, how many people are or aren't really there for us when we absolutely need them. And that's a painful process to go through, but it can be a necessary process to go through so that we can look clearly and honestly at ourselves, at our culture, at our relationships, at our resources, and think, okay, if this is the truth, then what do I do about it? I don't think lockdown has purged the national soul or, or done any kind of massive, beneficial, long-lasting good to us. I think it has brought out the good that was already there in people and the kindness that was already there in people. But it has also stared us in the face with our own sin and shortcomings. And maybe that's okay. Maybe that's a necessary part of the process. Socrates, I think it was, the ancient philosopher, said the unreflected life is not worth living if we're not able to look in the mirror 
and see an honest picture of ourselves and our society. If we're not able to do that, then we're not able to deal with what we see because we're just dealing with a veneer, we're dealing with an image, we're dealing with a pretend us or a pretend reality rather than the real thing. So that's a couple of images that are helping me at the moment understand what's going on. The triathlon, the long, hard slog, and the stripping back of the veneer, where we can see a bit more truly, a bit more raw, in a bit more of a raw way, what is really going on in ourselves and in our culture. But we have a God who sees us as we truly are. We have a God who gives strength to the weary, who helps those who cannot walk on their own. He says, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. He says, those who wait on me, those who wait on the Lord, will renew their strength. They will rise up on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. And the God who says, even the hairs on your head are numbered. Every thought in your mind, I know. Before a word is on your lips, I know it completely. I know you, says God, and I love you. So we can look deep into the mirror of God's love, see ourselves as we truly are, and yet know that we are loved so much more than we can ever understand. That's a couple of images that have helped me, just putting them out there in case they help you as well. Uh, thank you for watching, may God bless you, may God enable you to see him clearly, see yourself clearly and give you strength in this triathlon to reach the finish line in one piece and maybe even reach the finishing line with your arm around other people who you journeyed with and helped to get there as well.